It is no secret that the Houston Texans have added some really big time players to their roster this offseason. But there's one player that they quietly added that I think is really going to help them out. And we'll get right into that. If you're new to the channel, we're Detroit Lions fans, but this channel is all about teams that we like talking about. And we feel like just kind of gets overlooked by the national media and they would never really dive into any any story like this. So, again, Daniil Hunter, uh, Joe Mixon, Stefan Diggs. Added some some good players all around, big blue chip players, plus just like guys like Jeff Okuda that could have some rebound years. But if you look at the roster, you look here and there's a guy named Max Tooley just kind of sitting back here as a backup linebacker. But he was really good at B BYU. He signed as an undrafted free agent, and he's got a unique story that I think could be really could be really interesting as things get going. So he he graduates in 2015. But then he serves two-year church mission in the UK. Then he plays for BYU in 2018-19. Then there's a COVID-shortened season. And, you know, it gets weird in 2021-22. So it's like kind of what's going on there. But he appeared in 13 contests when he was a sophomore, 50 tackles, two tackles for loss, an interception. Even in the shortened 2020 season, he had 44 tackles starting. Like he was the guy. An interception, pass breakups in 2022, almost 60 tackles, pass breakup, forced fumble, and three interceptions. And so that's kind of where I started to catch my eye. Every year he had multiple interceptions, or he had he had an interception, then in 2022 had a multiple interceptions. And so you can see right here, and hopefully this comes through, but I mean, he is a guy that has great hands, athletic ability. This one just kind of gets thrown right to him, but still, he's able to take it. And he is a great kind of sneaky player that when you look at the the Houston Texans depth chart, defense doesn't get talked about enough because it's CJ Stroud, it's the offense, Tank Dell. You know, everybody knows what's going on here. Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz, the offensive line is going to be good. But it's like, all right, Will Anderson Jr., we know we got that. Daniil Hunter, okay, so defensive ends, check. Defensive tackles, okay, I'm okay with it linebacker christian harris okay and that's like all right what what do we have the depth here you know do we have the depth that we need and so max Tooley is a guy that goes into camp again you can only keep 53 men on the roster you're at 90 right now so half of these guys basically these two rows on the right hand side are going to get wiped out <clears throat> but is he a guy that can help you as you go into the season because you are going for the super bowl this year it's just it's just how it ends up being because you had such a good year last year. Your quarterback comes back. So can you make a run at the Super Bowl? Well, in order to do that, yes, you need your blue chip players to be really good, but you need a Max Tooley. You need somebody to come out of nowhere to really help you and be a good depth piece special teams guy. And that's where Max Tooley, I think, can really be that because you look and now you see that there's a pressure ranking and the Texans are included this and so it starts to kind of break down where teams where their pressure is and I thought this was a interesting way to put it so for example just avoid going 0 and 0 17 this year who's in that list the Denver Broncos right so you get the list like you're going to just kind of get all the way to who are the Super Bowl contenders which Denver Broncos you know they are not going to be good this year anyway okay Let's just not suck. Team, seriously, just boring. They're going to have trouble. Rookie quarterbacks, there's not, they are hoping for a CJ Stroud type of performance from all their rookies. It's just not going to happen. It's just, it's too hard. It just doesn't happen. Need to contend for the playoffs are these four teams. And I would agree with that. Like, need to be kind of in the mix. Um, I'd agree with those Colts Colts are like, yeah, I think we could be good with Anthony Richardson. Like I just, we want to be good. And I think we can be, I don't know. That's a tough one. All right. Carolina Panthers are in their own little category. All right. Super bowl. No, but you better be in the playoffs. I don't think the chargers are in there, but I think Steelers Jags, Falcons, the, the weird off season they had, they better be in there. Saints. Like, come on, what have you been doing? And Buccaneers, you went to the playoffs last year. Come on, go again. 
And then you get into the legitimate Super Bowl pressure. They start with Green Bay Packers. And then right after that is the Houston Texans and the Detroit Lions. What a difference a season makes. If they avoid the dreaded sophomore slump, Stroud and Anderson look primed to lead the Texans back to the playoffs. Fortified by a plethora of new players, the Texans seem kitten bent on taking advantage of Stroud on a rookie contract. Casario appears to have done this now. Now about that pesky nightmare of a schedule, which we've looked at the schedule and it's not as bad as people make it out to be. In my opinion, I thought it was fine. I think there's good rest. You get teams that come into you, the really hard teams. You got to go north a little bit, but it's fine. I didn't think the, te- the schedule was as bad, but it just shows that Houston Texans are being looked at as a legitimate Super Bowl contender. And you look at look at that. I mean, they're right by the, the Lions, the Rams, the Chiefs are all the way down here. But there's just like this pressure to not only get in the playoffs, but kind of make a little bit more of a run. It just yeah, it's, it's got to get in the playoffs. Once. Now, in order to do that, the best way to do that is to win the division. So you look around the division and it's like, man, the division's manageable. It's just manageable. That's that's the best word. It's not easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park. But when you can, when you know kind of what you're up against, and it can be manageable against, and then you and then you have a bad team in your division. That always helps. Got to get two against them because everybody else is going to get two against them. So it's like let's get two. None of this split and stuff with with the bad team in our division. And I think the Texans will be just fine. So. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've if you've watched multiple videos of us by now, would love if you subscri- subscribe. We're trying to get to 20,000 subs. We started this channel a year ago um, based kind of on the Texans because we thought they were going to be really good. No one was talking about them. We thought, isn't CJ Stroud? I think he might be good. And I think Nico Collins is good, but he doesn't really have a quarter. He hasn't had a quarterback. And what if Tank Dell? And I was like, the defense isn't terrible and their coach is a former defensive guy and he could be good. So we were like, man, no one's talking about him. We started talking about the Texans and now here we are with uh, 15,000 subs and we're trying to get to 20,000. Um, I don't know what it does for you. It doesn't really do a lot. You still got to have people watch, but it just makes it a little bit more legitimate to see like, Oh man, those guys have 20,000 views. Like I'll check them out. So make sure you subscribe. If you haven't would love that. Also let, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've ever heard of Max Tooley and what you think about him as he is an older player, one that with good hands, good athleticism, and could help the Texans. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll see all of you on the next one.